Hello everyone. I thought it was about time I'd done a decent video on this little uh, bobbin sander, oscillating sander, whatever you want to call it, that I built last year now. Um, I've done a little review of it on uh, one of the Atlas drill videos, but I thought I'd just go into a bit more detail just about this machine that I built. I'll just show you it working. So it's it's only small scale. At the moment, it's using bobbins that are <clears throat> two inch in height. It was only ever built on small scale because I knew the motor that I had for it was never any good. Much else. So. There you go. But it seems to work quite well. I want to profile some of Yes, there is a tiny, tiny little bit of run out on that. But it can still produce quite good results. Let's just put that aside for the moment and what I want to show is the donor machine for uh, some parts, the, mainly the motor that sat in here. I mean, you've probably all seen these. This is a. Well, it looks like it's made in Holland, Kinzo, but it really wasn't a very good. Um, Pretzel. It seemed as though the stroke that was on it, although it's got potential for having quite a big stroke, the stroke that was on it was less distance than the tooth of the saw. It really just wouldn't really cut anything. It was so inefficient. And I'd been happy with it, unhappy with it since the day I bought the thing. So I was quite happy to put it to some other use. I just haven't got around to chucking this bit away yet. So that's the machine that we used. Let's unplug this. Right, I thought I'd just go into a bit more detail of how this is built. So probably just want to take some bits off of it. Mm. Might be too difficult at the moment. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll come back. Okay, that's got the top off. So we can talk about this in a little more detail. Um, first off, I think we'll talk about sort of like carcass size for it. Now, I hadn't drawn any plans for this. I had an idea in my head of how I wanted to build this. And um, I saw on eBay somebody was advertising A4 pieces of 15mm uh, birch plywood, which I thought at the time was the ideal stuff to build it with. And it seems as though I was right, though. It's, it is good stuff. And I see a lot of people, other uh, makers and that on YouTube, use the stuff quite a lot to make stuff. It's, it's very good. So what it is, the base piece, is a piece of A4 size, 15mm birch plywood. These two sides are cut from the same piece, it's just another piece of A4. And if you imagine another piece, wider section here, so that is just another piece of A4, cut diagonally. That is two pieces of A4 lengthways and then obviously you've got another piece of A4 on the top here that just has a section cut off and a half circle cut out. So that's the outside piece of it, that's how to make up that, it, it just is pieces of A4 and you can make it to whatever size you want, what super motor you've got. Now the inside 
carriage this is A5 so you've got A5 here and a piece of A5 there notably this was chamfered and slightly adjusted so it's it's actually a bit narrower than A5 now um, just to make the carriage up it was a kind of a development thing of just sort of test fits seeing how things go and this is the piece I built first around the motor so I built it from the inside out and um, all I've got in here is just two pieces of 12 mil stainless steel I wanted to run it on that I didn't want to put ordinary steel in or I could have put silver steel in because it was ground but there was always sort of possibilities for rusting on that and I didn't want to go down that route so I wanted stainless so it'd stay okay and inside here there are four um, linear bearings now they use these on things like um, printers or small CNC engraver machines um, and the like so they're very good at running that way on ball bearings and I can actually turn this and they do run very well on that so that's how that's made and the two side pieces they are just a couple of bits of off cuts that were done in length to suit the motor just to give some clearance underneath so that's how that goes together the crank under here I used the crank from the old fret saw I had to reposition where um, the pivot was on the crank because like I said before it was so close on the other one that it really gave no throw on the crank so I've moved that across so it's got 20mm uh, I believe on there because I moved it 10mm 10, 10 off the centre so you've got a 20mm throw on there which I thought for the size of the motor and the size of the bobbins I'm using was um, was okay and yes it, it works out quite well there's just a piece of one inch angle that the um, connecting rod I suppose you can call that is and that's another part out of the old fret saw so that that's all that is I used the old RCD switch out of the fret saw that was mounted on the side of the motor so that was handy to have that um, inside here this is a Synchronous motor runs at very low speed um, I think this one is about it's between 50 and 60 revolutions per minute which seems ideal for a machine of this type and they're quite easily available on um, eBay for around sort of between 10 and 15 pounds so perhaps up to 20 dollars in the US which isn't a great deal of cost so that's just fitted in on a block uh, yeah I had to bore the pivot in there for it to sit onto I mean it was a well, drill it bore it it would drill it out get it to the right size and there is a little grub screw that was already on there that fitted onto the previous motor so that works well on there so that's all that is um, I put some springs on here and this was all put in before the, sort of the initial tests and run-ups I wasn't quite sure how strong this mo this um, oscillating motor was going to be for um, pushing this up for load wise so I just put these springs on just to give it a bit of help at the bottom of the stroke so it can it's got some help to lift it back up again so there's not too much strain going on the motor so that's what I've done there and when we come to the uh, connection here all this is it's another eBay part 
I'll need a different one. It was fortunate that the spindle on the motor was quite a good fit. The spindle on the motor is 8mm and that's 8mm as well. So there is a good fit on there and these are readily available from eBay as well and they're not very expensive at all, just, just a couple of pounds I think they were. They've already got the 8mm the hole in, got the grub screw in, so they're ideal for going on there. You can get varying collets for these. Um, I've got the, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a quarter or a 6mm collet in there, but it was bought to suit this set of little drum sanders that I bought, and these you can buy from anywhere. And you can make your own if you want, there's, there's plenty of YouTube videos to show how to make your own bobbins, sanding bobbins. So that's all that is, and well there, that's how the machine is made up. And it's fairly easy to change out the uh, to change out the bobbins. You've got a couple of flats on the uh, on this chuck, and then on the nut as well. Just undo them tap those out, new bobbin in, so it's quite simple. So that was that. The top and pivot, now I've I've got to change this and I think that's getting to the point now where I'm actually going to do this, change the top on it, because the pivot point was off and you can see we want to be near enough on centre with the pivot point, so I've got to bring this over somehow. But so how I done this was just some blocks routed in some curves to match on the radius. And then these clamps, I kept these and I keep a lot of bits off old machinery and bits. These were off an old uh, Flymo lawnmower I had. They were just the handle clamps. So I kept those. And they come in very handy for that. And I keep all sorts of silly bits like that. You never know when they're going to come in useful something you're making. So I think I'm going to get ready to redo this top. It's only an MDF at the moment and I've got some nice supply that I want to make the top with and redo this pivot on here. Now I can't go too far because I've got to remember um, sort of the, the line of when it's at 45 degrees I've got that piece on the motor although I can I can take a little bit off of there but I've got to remember sort of that position there so this top might get adjusted um, I'm not sure how things are going to go yet with it but I'll, I'll look into that and I'll do another video of, of making that but I want like I said I wanted to do this first video of just showing you how I made this what roughly the dimensions are um, so you can make one of your own. I mean, I'd, I'd seen several others on YouTube that have built these kind of machines, and um, yeah, they're all they're all good in their own way. They have they have all, all have their own good bits. Um, but this is my take on it. This is how I wanted to do it. Parts are quite easily available for it. Um, the fret saw that I use as a donor, you can pick those up quite cheap. You can find them on uh, on eBay or probably car boot sales or whatever. So you can still get them quite easy. Not very expensive at all. So I think the whole unit can be built for around fifty pounds, which compared to yeah, I suppose you can buy a second hand bobbin sander for, well, I can't see you'll get one for much under a hundred, but I mean the new ones are what, hundred, two hundred pounds, going up to like three, four hundred pounds for a better quality one. But there you go. So you can see the wiring I did.
just extending out from there. These are soldered and then they've got um, heat shrink over the joints on there and it just runs through. Then we've got a separate one down for the Synchronorus motor. And it's all 240 volt, the Synchronorus motor is 240 volt because that's she's the other uh, machines I've seen on YouTube, they used like uh, windscreen wiper motors running on 12 volt and there was all sorts of other gubbins in there, other separate switches to get the oscillating motion going and I wanted it all on one voltage which is why I went down the route of, uh, of the 240 volt Synchronorus motor. So I'm quite happy with that. I mean, there's no reason why you can't put another switch in to switch the Synchronorus motor off. That's quite an easy thing to do if you wanted it so this just stays in one position. And you can easily set that to whatever height you want. The crank will turn quite easy. It doesn't affect the Synchronorus motor at all to move that. So there you go. If you want to build one of your own you've probably got a better idea of how I built this one. and Put your own ideas into it. Change it how you want. Do your own things with it. There you go. It's not difficult to build. And I'd I'd still consider this as like a prototype really. Although I, I probably wouldn't do anything much with it. But it was kind of built as a prototype. I hadn't done any plans, as I said before. And it was just a, a make it up as you go along, which is what I did. And I had some rough ideas, like I said, with the A4 pieces of ply. I knew it was going to roughly be this size. I had an idea of what size. Well, I knew what size the motor was, and I knew I could fit that within kind of that space. So it all evolved around this motor. It just depends, I suppose, what motor you've got. There's no reason why you can't scale this up. Works very well. There you go. There's my little bobbin sander. Hopefully, the next time I show you this, it'll you'll see the better top for it with the proper inserts and bits and pieces so I'll, I'll make that so see you next time